to begin uh, their reentry back into the Earth's atmosphere. The day's activities uh, began very early this morning, about 6.40 Central Time this morning, as uh, Expedition 37 handed over command of the International Space Station to Expedition 38, and Fyodor Yurchikin handing over command to his former crewmate, Oleg Kotov. They flew together on Expedition 15. The Yurchikin to Kotov change of command was captured early this morning, and we have it for you again on this replay. And we are happy to, really happy, Houston, Huntsville, Munich, Tsukuba, Moscow. It's a great day for us because we have road, road to home. But each day, maybe each night, we will have a dream to return here again, to see our guys, our friends. Like, today is a great day for me because Six years ago, we with Oleg walking here, uh, just a little more than six months. It was great expedition for me, great uh, hope for Oleg. In 2007, uh, 2010, we just a little, only two weeks had between our expedition. But now we are together, and I am very lucky then. Oleg, its next commander or station. We are lucky to return to home, and we know the station now in great, strong hands. <laughs> and very smart, very international. And this great day, I would like to say each MCC, thank you very, very much. It's will, it was Great time to walk with you. I hope we met on ground in just a little several hours. <laughs> yes. And I would like to say by Expedition 37. Anybody welcome on board for Expedition 37. 38. Sorry, Oleg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 30, uh, and Expedition 38, Rick Mastrakio, Koichi Wakata, Michael Turin, Michael Hopkins, Sergei Rizansky, and Expedition 38, Commander Oleg Kotov. Welcome on board. Okay, hello everyone, hello everyone on the ground. So again, I'm really glad to pick up in, uh, the station from my first commander, Fyodor Yurchikhin, and uh, from his excellent crew. And station is really in good shape, and uh, everything is fine, uh, it's just awesome. And uh, I'm really glad to assume the command of this station, and uh, looking forward to work with you, uh, with all ground teams, all M controllers, all MCCs. So uh, just uh, thank you for your support. And uh, Expedition 38 now, <laughs> now uh, on the station. Thank you. It's up Moscow. Officially, I take the command of the 38th Expedition. Добро пожаловать 38th increment. Счастливой нам работы. Once again, uh, that was uh, a replay of the change of command ceremony very early this morning, uh, Central Time, in which uh, Fyodor Yurchikin handed over command of the International Space Station to Oleg Kotov and uh, his crew of six uh, now on board by themselves. Over the past uh, several hours, a lot of activity on board. In fact, the last four days aboard the International Space Station has seen an unprecedented flurry of activity. The launching 
uh, back on Wednesday night, U.S. time, Thursday morning at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan of the Soyuz TMA 11M spacecraft uh, with Mikhail Turin, Rick Mastracchio, and Koichi Wakata on board was the flight uh, that was accelerated by three weeks in its launch day to deliver to the International Space Station the Olympic torch uh, that um, will be used ultimately next February 7th to light the flame at the Fischt Stadium in Sochi, Russia, uh, to get uh, the 2014 Winter Olympics underway. Uh, this torch, uh, along with uh, other torches uh, that have been part of the Olympic relay that began back in October in Olympia, Greece, uh, has uh, seen the Olympic relay travel uh, to the heights of the North Pole, to the depths of Lake Baikal, and uh, then to outer space aboard the, the Soyuz vehicle that delivered uh, Turin, Mastracchio, and Wakata just a few days ago. The torch then was brought outside of the International Space Station on Saturday by Kotov and Sergei Rizansky during a five-hour, 50-minute spacewalk for a uh, photo opportunity uh, brought back inside and stowed aboard the Soyuz TMA-09M spacecraft. Just two and a half hours ago, at, or five and a half hours ago, I should say, at 2.09 p.m. Central Time. It was time uh, for the crew members to say farewell to one another. Let's take a look at that clip as uh, Kotov bid uh, farewell. Yurchikin, Parmitano, and Nyberg were at the hatchway between the Zvezda service module and their Soyuz vehicle that was docked uh, to the aft end of Zvezda following a Soyuz relocation activity that took place back on Friday, November 1st. At that time, uh, the three crew members uh, who are coming home this evening yeah, undocked please. from the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station and uh, in a 24-minute maneuver flew around to redock at the aft port of Zvezda, opening up the Rosviet module docking port for the arrival of Mastrakio, Turin, Wakata, and the Olympic torch. With that activity having been completed, uh, it was time to say farewell. The three departing crew members made their way into the Soyuz vehicle, and Kotov and uh, Yurchikin uh, worked uh, to close hatches on both sides of the docking interface, permitting the three departing crew members uh, to get into their Sokol launch and entry suits and to conduct leak checks at the docking interface of the Soyuz station docking port, as well as leak checks on their Sokol spacesuits. All of that activity uh, went uh, without a hitch, uh, and with the uh, crew in good shape, with the vehicle in good shape, uh, all was in readiness for the undocking of uh, the uh, Soyuz spacecraft from the aft port of the service module. Again, you're looking at uh, scenes of the uh, final farewells and the hatch closure that took place at 2.09 p.m. Central Time on Sunday afternoon. Once uh, the hatches were closed and sealed on the uh, Soyuz uh, and leak checks uh, were successfully conducted, it was time for the Soyuz to depart from the aft end of the Zvezda service module. Uh, at 5.25 p.m., the commands were sent to open up the hooks that had held the Soyuz to the aft port of the Zvezda service module, and a minute or so later at 5.26 p.m. Central Time, uh, springs on both sides of the docking interface pushed off against one another, and the Soyuz was on its way. Three minutes later, uh, thrusters on the Soyuz were fired in a separation burn to begin an opening rate that uh, at this time has placed the Soyuz seven and a half miles away from the International Space Station in preparation for the deorbit burn that is less than 13 minutes from now. This is video again taken uh, about uh, two hours and 20 minutes ago of the Soyuz vehicle as it departed the vicinity of the International Space Station with Yurchikin, Parmitano, and Nyberg aboard.
So with the Soyuz now in a position uh, for its deorbit burn, uh, what will transpire over the course of the next hour or so will uh, occur in very fast fashion. Uh, the deorbit burn that's coming up in just 12 minutes will be a four minute, 45 second retrograde maneuver, a braking maneuver, if you will, to slow the Soyuz down and allow it to drop out of orbit. Uh, it, we are currently about uh, 35 minutes away from sunrise at the landing site. Uh, once uh, the deorbit burn uh, takes place, as you see in this animation, uh, the Soyuz will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, and at 8.23 p.m. Central Time, uh, the pyrotechnic command will be issued to separate the three sections of the Soyuz vehicle, leaving the crew in the descent module, uh, barreling through the Earth's atmosphere, ready to come home. The heat shield uh, ablating uh, temperatures uh, as it uh, moves into the Earth's atmosphere that will build up around the Soyuz of about 2,500 degrees. Maximum G-loads will begin on the crew at about 8.33 p.m. The command to open chutes will then follow at 8.35 p.m. First pilot chute will be uh, released to pilot parachutes, followed by the main chute that will further decelerate the crew's uh, descent back into the Earth's atmosphere. An altimeter on the aft end of the uh, spacecraft will detect uh, the altitude relative to the landing. Soft landing engines will then fire a couple of seconds uh, before touchdown, and the Soyuz will will be home with landing scheduled just one hour, four minutes and 45 seconds from now at 8.49 p.m. Central Time, which will be 8.49 a.m. at the landing site, just 90 miles to the southeast of the remote town of Jezkazgan. The weather at the landing site is uh, said to be uh, excellent for landing, just a few clouds at 2,500 feet, broken clouds at 25,000 feet, winds out of the north at about eight knots, temperatures at landing time, which is just 29 minutes after local sunrise, will be very chilly, about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. The reports uh, from uh, the landing site, actually uh, from Jezkazgan, is that uh, the Russian Mi-8 helicopters that were dispatched uh, in the wee hours Sunday U.S. time uh, from Karaganda to Jezkazgan to a forward deployment point uh, to enable the landing team, the search and recovery forces, and a team of NASA and European Space Agency personnel in support of landing. Uh, they have boarded a dozen Russian Mi-8 helicopters, and uh, the rotors on those helicopters are now spinning up in advance of uh, the helos going wheels up for the landing site right around the time of the deorbit burn. The NASA contingent of uh, recovery personnel who will be on, si on scene at the landing site to greet the crew include uh, Joel Montalbano, the deputy ISS program manager, uh, Sean Fuller, who is the head of uh, spaceflight operations in Russia for NASA, and uh, Bob Bankin, the NASA chief astronaut from the Johnson Space Center in Houston. There are NASA and uh, European Space Agency flight uh, surgeons who will be uh, supporting uh, all of the, the activity at the landing site and the recovery of Karen Nyberg and Luca Parmitano. The, the Russians, of course, have their own team of support personnel and flight surgeons as well as Russian nurses ready to attend to Fyodor Yurchikin and the other crew members as they are extracted from the spacecraft following touchdown. Uh, the way this will work, uh, as is the case for all uh, Soyuz landings, uh, the dozen Russian Mi-8 helicopters will augment uh, other search and recovery personnel who are in all-terrain vehicles already positioned in the landing zone to the southeast of Jezkazgan. They will be accompanied by an Antonov 24 aircraft that will be flying around the vicinity of the landing zone as a flying command and control uh, center, if you will, relaying uh, voice and uh, data from the Soyuz spacecraft uh, to the Russian mission control team at uh, the Russian mission control center in Koryov, outside of Moscow. Uh, if uh, assuming an on-target landing for the Soyuz, uh, the helicopters will begin to land in sequential fashion to begin the process of extracting the crew, setting up an inflatable medical tent near the capsule, about 100 yards or so away from the capsule, in that remote field uh, that the spacecraft will be touching down in. The crew will be extracted uh, from uh, the spacecraft, placed in comfortable chairs near the uh, vehicle uh, so that they have a few minutes uh, to uh, get their land legs back uh, to begin their adaptation to a gravity environment before they are hoisted in those chairs and carried into the medical tent to get out of their Sokol launch and entry suits and into more comfortable clothing 
as well as to undergo some medical tests. They will be loaded back into uh, individual helicopters for a two-hour flight back to Karaganda, the prime staging city uh, for this uh, activity tonight. And uh, they then will be flown in aircraft, uh, uh, Parmitano and Nyberg in a, Russia, in a uh, NASA aircraft back to Houston, while Yurchikin uh, returns uh, to Star City. Uh, the training base uh, outside of Moscow uh, and a flight uh, to Chkalovsky Air Base outside of Star City to be reunited with his family. You do? At zero four five. Coming up on the six and a half minute mark now until the deorbit burn, everything in good shape, all is in readiness for the start of the trek home for your chicken, Parmitano and Nyberg. And the attitude was nominal. Copy. Now receiving reports uh, that the first of these uh, 12 helicopters uh, uh, that are staged at the Jezkazgan airport are now departing. Uh, they are wheels up, some of them, uh, the rest will uh, be wheels up shortly in sequential fashion, uh, headed uh, for the landing zone, uh, which is about 90 miles to the southeast of Jezkazgan. Uh, the first of the helicopters will fly in a circular pattern, including uh, personnel in a media helicopter uh, to capture a video and still photography of the Soyuz as it descends uh, toward the landing site uh, out of the darkness of night and the pre-dawn hours into the uh, glimmer of uh, daylight uh, with the landing again scheduled just 29 minutes after sunrise uh, at uh, the landing site locally in south-central Kazakhstan. And uh, just a reminder, there could be periods of time during uh, the entry of the Soyuz spacecraft where we lose communications with the crew. That is to be expected if it occurs uh, because of the altitude of the International Space Station and its uh, relay antennas relative to the Soyuz spacecraft as it moves further and further away uh, from the International Space Station into the landing area where voice and data will be picked up by that Antonov 24 a command center that is flying already in the vicinity of the landing zone. Okay, I'm going to stay on this page until a cover is open. Um, that's up to you. I can uh, watch the cover as well. Everything uh, is in readiness for the uh, initiation of the firing of the Soyuz engines three and a half minutes from now. Again, this will be a four minute, 45 second retrograde maneuver, a braking maneuver uh, to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second and enable it to drop out of orbit uh, to begin its descent towards the Earth's atmosphere and eventually toward a touchdown at the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan, Kazakhstan, landing schedule just 57 minutes from now. The International Space Station is passing uh, just to the east of Tierra del Fuego at the southern tip of South America, about uh, to begin a northwest to south, a northwest uh, approach on this particular orbit of the Earth over the South uh, Atlantic Ocean from southwest to northeast, moving uh, in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator.
The Soyuz, uh, seven and a half miles away from the International Space Station at a safe distance for this deorbit maneuver. Okay. Now just two minutes away. Luca? We can do that later. Okay. Okay, then... No, the um, cover. Okay. Now just one minute away from the deorbit burn. Yes, yes we have the yeah. mode. Yeah. We have GSO. Over yes, ready. Sent uh, the command. Command confirmed. We have the SKD cover open. Going to control. Soyuz Commander Fyodor Yurchikin okay, presiding over uh, this homecoming for he and his crewmates, Karen Nyberg and Luca Parmitano. Uh, 20 seconds till the burn. Okay. Ten seconds. Three. Okay, four, three, two, one. We have the thruster activation. We have the SKD operation. The deorbit burn is underway. That uh, confirmed by the visiting vehicle officer here in Mission Control. Time of the burn. Fyodor Yurchikin, Karen Nyberg, Luca Parmitano, and the Olympic Torch are on their way back to Earth. Thirty seconds duration. Twelve uh, decimal seven two gate. Copy. Parameter KDU parameter is a nominal. Copy. And as the deorbit burn was initiated, uh, eight out of the twelve Russian Mi-8 helicopters are now wheels up from Jezkazgan headed uh, for the landing site, just 90 miles to the southeast. One minute, 25 decimal seven. Parameter KDU. parameter is nominal. Thruster uh, operation is stable. At one minute thirty seconds. Thirty-nine decimal eight. Copy. The rest of parameters are nominal. Copy. The next. At uh, two minutes. Almost halfway into the burn, everything looking good according to your chicken. Five, three, decimal five. Copy. Cadu parameters are nominal. Copy. Two, thirty. At 
Uh, seven decimal seven. Parameter, uh, KDO parameters are nominal. Copy. Two, five, four. Uh, tail one. Waiting for tail one. Copy. Seventy-eight decimal eight. Copy. We passed the, uh, the point KDO parameters are nominal at 310, copy, 85, decimal 4, copy. Next, at 330. At 330, 94.9, copy. The uh, deorbit burn is nearly complete. Count at about every half meters. Copy. Four minutes, 108.8. Copy. Next is 4.20. One seventeen point two. Принято. Copy. Chat. Standing by for Gaka. Yes, Gaka. Gaka confirmed. Thermal sensor on. The bell confirmed. Copy. Принято. Depot fire and signature confirmed. Принято. Gaka plus 10 confirmed. Copy. Then up confirmed. Copy. Uh, do you see the pressure drop in Bell? Stand by. Affirmative. The uh, deorbit burn is now complete. V visiting vehicle officer here in Mission Control, uh, reporting uh, that everything looked good. The next step uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes will be the depressurization of the upper portion of the Soyuz vehicle, the orbital module uh, that uh, required in advance of the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz vehicle that will come up uh, shortly at 8.23 p.m. Central Time, uh, just prior to the point at which uh, the Soyuz begins its entry into the Earth's atmosphere. The orbital module at the top no longer needed. The instrumentation and service module now has completed its job. What's left is the middle section, the most important part where the crew is located in the descent module. The separation of these three sections will expose the heat shield at the bottom of the descent module as it uh, re-enters the Earth's atmosphere to provide uh, uh, the repulsion of uh, the heat buildup uh, which around the spacecraft will reach about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Look at check your O2 hoses. Check how they routed. Uh, no right. Everything is normal. What's the best way? Like this? No, like this. Okay. You will go up. Up, okay. Uh, 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 after separation, current, uh -huh. is when we have G just a little, step by step, uh -huh. stronger and stronger. Yeah, Luca, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, after separation and after re-entry, tight new straps, not immediately, but uh, step by step. Before we spare. Look, uh, so with uh, a nominal deorbit burn behind them, uh, Yurchik and Parmitano and Nyberg are now uh, beginning to descend out of their orbit. 
We're about uh, 17 minutes away from the point uh, where at the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan it will be sunrise on a chilly morning with temperatures uh, around 25 degrees Fahrenheit, some uh, broken and scattered clouds, uh, not much in the way of weather in this uh, mid-November landing for the Soyuz vehicle, wh which will be approaching the landing site, as you see on this map, from southwest and northeast. Is everything clear? Okay. Look, uh, everything is clear. What about your straps? The uh, search and recovery forces are descending upon the landing site. Already at the landing site are a quartet of all-terrain vehicles uh, that uh, were deployed earlier in the day and now are on scene at the expected uh, target point uh, for the Soyuz vehicle. Uh, if it lands on target, uh, the coordinates would be 47.19 north latitude and 69.34 east longitude, uh, putting the landing site, the bullseye, if you will, about 90 miles to the southeast of Jezkazgan. We need mm -hmm. That was three seconds later, yes, that's correct. And to the reason help you to sit in this seat, to have a good position in this seat, yes? And remember the legs, not push down, now on, on, on this, yeah. Before we uh, went on the air uh, a short time ago, uh, flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center, uh, again, you're seeing a live picture of uh, the flight control room in Korolev outside of Moscow. Uh, they, uh, the flight control team there instructed your chicken uh, to keep talking, keep providing reports all the way uh, through entry and landing. Again, uh, because of the geometry of the International Space Station relative to the Soyuz, and because of the uh, altitude of the station at 262 statute miles at the time of uh, the deorbit burn tonight, uh, it is expected that uh, we would lose communications with the Soyuz at certain periods uh, of entry uh, before it is picked up in closer range uh, to that Antonov 24 Flying Command and Control Center that is already in position over the landing zone. 203 oxygen 780 pressure. Descent model no issues with the systems, and I believe you heard that we discussed that Vaka was uh, slightly later. Yes, by three seconds. Correct. We are seated comfortably. We are on page 110. By the time we'll close helmet and start working the timeline on page 1110. Copy. Okay, the exact time of GECA, 050007. Looking ahead at uh, the major milestones uh, to come uh, prior to landing, in about uh, 16 minutes, uh, the pyrotechnic devices uh, on the Soyuz spacecraft will be firing uh, to separate the three sections of the Soyuz that will occur at 8.23 p.m. Central Time while the Soyuz is at an altitude of almost 87 miles above the Earth. Three minutes after that, uh, the Soyuz will reach the first traces of the Earth's atmosphere at 8.26 p.m. Central Time, some 61 and a half miles above the Earth. At that point, uh, the first uh, tug of Earth's gravity will be felt by the th three crew members on board uh, the Soyuz vehicle. Uh, that uh, gravity uh, uh, will be uh, initiated uh, for the first time in 166 days since their launch back on May 29th. The maximum G loads uh, on the crew of about three to four Gs will be felt uh, at 8.33 p.m. Central Time at an altitude of 20 miles above the Earth. 
That will be followed uh, just two minutes later by the command to open the chutes. Two pilot parachutes are first deployed, the second of which will extract a drogue chute. Uh, the drogue chute is then released, uh, slowing the Soyuz down from a descent rate of 230 meters per second to just 80 meters per second. That is then followed in trip hammer fashion by the release of the main parachute, which covers a huge area, slowing the Soyuz down uh, to a descent rate of just 7.5 meters per second. Its harnesses first allow the Soyuz to descend at an angle of 30 degrees to expel heat, then will shift the Soyuz to a straight vertical descent. The uh, heat shield on the Soyuz uh, will be uh, jettisoned after uh, the uh, main uh, heating on uh, the bottom of the Soyuz vehicle is repelled and uh, the Soyuz is well within the Earth's atmosphere, uh, no longer requiring the use of the heat shield. Uh, the jettisoning of the heat shield itself exposes an altimeter device at the base of the Soyuz uh, to uh, provide perception on its altitude above the ground that's fed into the Soyuz computers and ultimately will trigger the firing of the soft landing engines at the base of the Soyuz, a final uh, braking maneuver just two to three seconds uh, before touchdown. Uh, and then the Soyuz will be home, landing schedule just 40 minutes from now at 8.49 p.m. Central Time. Program can be monitored by uh, the uh, signatures. We'll have enough time to assess the situation. All limbs, reminder. Press separation, you'll need to release the PTT. And then uh, uh, push and talk without keeping PTT depressed. Okay, we'll be manipulating the PTT. After touchdown, uh, the search and recovery forces uh, will be on hand uh, to begin the process of extracting the crew one by one uh, from the uh, Soyuz spacecraft uh, parked uh, right by the spacecraft itself. There will be three uh, chairs, uh, reclining chairs, if you will, that the crew will be placed in uh, for comfort. Uh, they'll be covered with blankets, no doubt, uh, to ward off uh, the chilling effects of uh, the early sunrise temperatures uh, that are hovering around the 25 degree Fahrenheit uh, area. Uh, the crew uh, will have a few minutes uh, and an opportunity to uh, begin their adaptation to a gravity environment for the first time in five and a half months before they're carried into the nearby inflatable medical tent that search and recovery personnel will have erected just minutes after touchdown. Uh, once inside the medical tent, the crew uh, will uh, receive initial medical tests will have an opportunity to be helped out of their Sokol launch and entry suits, get into more comfortable flight clothing. Uh, they will be placed one by one into all-terrain vehicles that will be parked just outside of the tent and driven a short distance uh, to three helicopters. They'll each board uh, their own helicopter for a two-hour flight uh, back to Karaganda, uh, the primary staging area for tonight's landing and recovery operations. And uh, then uh, Nyberg and Parmitano uh, will be uh, placed inside a NASA jet along with their flight surgeons for the trip back to Earth as uh, Yurchikin then boards a Gagarin cosmonaut training aircraft uh, for the flight back to Chikalovsky Air Base outside of Star City and a reunion with his family and Russian space officials. We are ready to send F3. Copy. Auto is ready. Copy. Olymp, monitor the attitude. You will not have an opportunity to monitor the attitude, unfortunately. Copy. Your chicken uh, currently reviewing uh, some of the entry procedures with flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, outside Moscow. As we are uh, just over 10 minutes away from the expected separation of the three sections of the Soyuz vehicle as the Soyuz uh, drops out of orbit uh, for 
uh, its descent uh, toward the landing site in south central uh, Kazakhstan, uh, just to the southeast of the remote town of Jezkazgan. Olympus Super Moscow. Olympus and CC Moscow. Olympus Super. Olympus and CC Moscow. That call from Russian uh, flight controllers at uh, the Russian Mission Control Center to the call sign of Olympus, that is uh, your chicken's call sign for his Soyuz vehicle. Tonight's landing wrapping up a uh, whirlwind of activity on the International Space Station, the launch of a new crew, nine crew members on board the station for the first time since October 2009, a spacewalk to bring outside uh, the Olympic torch uh, for a photo opportunity uh, for the Sochi Olympic Organizing Committee, and now this evening, uh, the return to Earth uh, for three of the uh, crew members as your cheek and Nyberg and Parmitano uh, descend back toward Earth, leaving uh, Back on the space station, the Expedition 38 crew, uh, the uh, new expedition officially began at the time of undocking a few hours ago under the command of Oleg Kotov, joined by Sergei Rizansky, Mike Hopkins, Rick Mastrakio, Koichi Wakata, and Mikhail Turin. Olympus Super Moscow. Olympus MCC Moscow. Once again, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the Soyuz uh, is beyond the range of uh, the limit of guaranteed space to space uh, VHF voice communications. Uh, that's why you're not hearing a timely response uh, from the crew. Hopefully, we, we will be picking up uh, periodic communications from the uh, Soyuz. Uh, Fyodor Yurchikin uh, has been trained and instructed to continue uh, communicating, even though it may not be received uh, continuously on the ground. Moscow. We can copy you, but through the noise, how you copy us? Less than six minutes away from module separation. Moscow, how copy? Alim 2, I hear you well. Alim 2, copy loud and clear. How was?
This is Mission Control Houston, uh, all quiet as uh, Russian flight controllers uh, are calling uh, the crew on board uh, the Soyuz vehicle. They are responding, but uh, in very choppy communications, uh, which was expected. Uh, that is uh, a function of uh, the geometry of the distance now between uh, the Soyuz vehicle and the International Space Station and its communications relay capability. And uh, as we prepare for the module separation, about three minutes from now, it is sunrise at the landing site. First glimmer of dawn. The uh, separation of the three sections of the Soyuz uh, will occur at an altitude of almost 87 miles above the Earth. The first major milestone uh, following the deorbit burn, which was executed at 7.55 p.m. Central Time in flawless fashion. Less than 28 minutes uh, from the Soyuz touching down southeast of Jezkazgan. Russian Mi-8 helicopters with NASA and European Space Agency personnel are airborne uh, out of Jezkazgan heading for the landing site. We have less than, slightly more than one minute before separation. Check the LED, a confirming separation program on and uh, control descent program five. Also, Lazar M. Dus 2. Remind, then you'll be. Uh, talking in duplex mode. Olympus, we can copy you, but through the noise. Uh, please proceed with the detailed report, even though we will not have a two-way comm.
As you can see on the front board of the uh, Russian Mission Control Center, in the upper left-hand corner, the animated depiction of the uh, separation of the modules, and that has now been confirmed through data received at the Russian Mission Control Center. Module separation has been confirmed on time. The next step is uh, coming up uh, in about two minutes. Uh, that will be the point at which the Soyuz vehicle will reach the first traces of the uh, Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of uh, 325,000 feet or 61 and a half statute miles. Once again, uh, module separation confirmed by the Search and Recovery Forces, confirmed by, at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, coming up on entry interface. Not only uh, will the Soyuz uh, begin to barrel its way through the uh, Earth's atmosphere, the crew will begin uh, to feel the first tug of gravity against their bodies since their launch 166 days ago. Just seconds away now from entry interface, landing now just 23 and a half minutes from now. Soyuz TMA-09M with uh, Fyodor Yurchik and Karen Nyberg and Luca Parmitano on board, now uh, entering the Earth's atmosphere. About seven minutes from now, the crew will uh, feel uh, its maximum G-loads of about three to four uh, times Earth's gravity against their bodies. That will occur at an altitude of some 20 miles above the Earth. The Soyuz moving from southwest to northeast toward its landing site, about 90 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan.
just uh, 21 minutes away from landing. Everything uh, is going well with the Soyuz descent back to Earth. Uh, communications, as expected, uh, are sporadic. Uh, as we get uh, closer to the point where the Soyuz uh, antennas are picked up by the Antonov 24 in the vicinity of the landing zone, uh, communications should uh, stabilize and improve to a continuous basis uh, between uh, the crew on board the Soyuz vehicle, your Chikin in particular as Soyuz commander, and the Russian flight control team in Koryov. Temperatures around the Soyuz uh, should be at their peak, about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, being ablated uh, by the heat shield on the Soyuz. Once uh, that peak heating uh, is complete, the heat shield will be jettisoned, exposing uh, the base of the Soyuz uh, and its altimeters to provide altitude uh, and range information uh, to uh, the Soyuz computers. This was the point uh, at which no communications were expected from the Soyuz as uh, the buildup of plasma uh, around the spacecraft would block any communications that would be attempted by Fyodor Yurchik to the Russian flight control team in Koryov. We should be out of peak heating very shortly. Uh, G loads on the crew will build up to about uh, four Gs or so about two minutes from now before uh, they begin uh, to decelerate. The command to open uh, the parachutes uh, expected just four minutes from now. This is Mission Control Houston, 17 minutes from uh, the expected landing of the Soyuz vehicle. Well into the Earth's atmosphere with G-loads uh, building up on the crew for a short period of time. Just about uh, two and a half minutes away from the command to open the chutes. Again, uh, this will be done in a uh, sequential fashion with two pilot parachutes first uh, having been deployed, the second of which extracts a drogue chute followed by uh, the release of the main parachute and uh, the, uh, the cutting, basically, of the cable on the drogue chute, the main parachute, uh, is the uh, essential force uh, that will provide the lion's share of deceleration for the Soyuz as it uh, makes its way uh, toward uh, the landing site. It's about 14 minutes from the point of the uh, chute deployment okay. until touchdown. On the HF2, how do you read us? Olympi, how do you read us on MCC Moscow? Olympia MCC Moscow, how do you read us? All right, now, Jules, it's two. 
this is seven six. Uh, integral plus ten. Copy. So everything is nominal. Fiota, your cheek in reporting everything nominal. Maximum geo is four decimal nine. Copy. Uh, what is the pressure in ESTA? Inaudible. Uh, the crew members are feeling fine. Great. We trapped in tightly. Your cheek in uh, reporting. Okay. The crew is strapped in okay. tightly. The crew is doing well. And uh, the report uh, of a maximum G-force of 4.9 Gs on the crew during uh, that period. Uh, those uh, G-forces now uh, being reduced uh, considerably as we stand by for confirmation of the chute deployment. Inaudible. 20 seconds. The Soyuz now six and a half uh, miles in altitude. Twelve and a half minutes till touchdown. We're awaiting a formal confirmation of the chute deploy. And the Soyuz should be coming into range uh, for consistent voice communications with the Antonov 24, the uh, flying uh, command center aircraft uh, that is uh, deployed around the landing zone. We now have confirmation uh, from uh, the flight director at the Russian Mission Control Center in Moscow 
that uh, the chutes are out, nominally deployed, on time. Everything looking good as the Soyuz now is ten and a half minutes away from landing. Notable. Inaudible. In the early morning light of a Monday morning at the landing site, uh, the search and recovery forces are gathering uh, for the arrival of the Expedition 37 crew, nine and a half minutes from now. Normal. Shoots are out. Fyodor Yurchik and the Soyuz commander reporting all Soyuz systems in good shape. And now video being received. Uh, we just lost it. We had it for just a second. We should be getting it back momentarily. Uh, a good view of the uh, Soyuz vehicle descending under its parachute. Inaudible. And uh, that uh, video now back being relayed uh, from cameras on an all-terrain vehicle at the landing site, a great view of the Soyuz TMA 09M spacecraft descending under uh, what appears to be a cloudless sky on a Monday morning shortly after sunrise at the landing site. The chute uh, fully deployed. Three. Your chicken uh, having re reported just a moment or two ago that the crew is in excellent shape, eagerly awaiting touchdown that is eight and a half minutes from now. Unintelligible. The uh, all-terrain vehicles at the landing site arrived on scene several hours ago in advance of uh, the Russian Mi-8 helicopters. Again, uh, 12 Russian helicopters uh, with NASA, European Space Agency, and Russian recovery personnel are uh, arriving on scene in a uh, sequential fashion, uh, flying in a racetrack pattern around the landing zone. Once uh, the Soyuz touches down, they will then uh, begin uh, to land one by one, the most critical personnel landing first uh, to begin the extraction of the crew from the spacecraft and to erect an inflatable medical tent nearby, uh, which uh, the crew will be brought into uh, to have uh, the initial medical tests performed on them, as well as uh, to be assisted in the removal of their Sokol launch and entry suits. A journey that started 166 days ago, a journey that has uh, lasted 70.3 million miles for Fyodor Yurchik and Luca Parmitano and Karen Nyberg, nearing an end, touchdown just six minutes away. Thank you for the information. The crew feels great.
Scorpio, thank you. So there are eight, three, one, an audible one and two. And you heard uh, the beacon uh, sound, uh, basically a beacon locator that provides uh, an audio transmitter signal uh, for the uh, search and recovery forces as they hone in on the precise landing uh, point uh, to which the Soyuz is descending toward. The helicopters uh, that have arrived at the landing site already report a visual on the Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, we have been receiving video for almost five minutes now. It's a 14-minute uh, ride uh, from the point of shoot deploy toward touchdown, which is now just about four minutes away. And there you can see one of the Russian Mi-8 helicopters circling uh, around uh, the Soyuz vehicle as it uh, continues to descend uh, towards a touchdown. If uh, we're lucky, uh, we'll see uh, the firing of the soft landing engines, uh, the final braking rockets about two seconds before touchdown that will uh, kick up a cloud of dust, uh, but will help uh, soften uh, the reentry. Uh, the crew is uh, lying on inflatable uh, seat cushions, basically. Uh, that uh, will soften uh, the impact on their backs uh, at the point of touchdown. Copy, preparing for landing. Just two and a half minutes uh, until touchdown. And meanwhile, the International Space Station is flying 262 miles overhead, Nautical. flying over the uh, Japanese islands. One of the crew members on board, Koichi Wakata, from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. A crew that uh, just a few hours ago uh, numbered nine, now down to six with three of their crewmates about to land on the steppe of Kazakhstan. Soyuz now one kilometer above the ground. Everything is all set for touchdown coming up shortly. Russian uh, search and recovery helicopters uh, right around the spacecraft, right where they should be, one after the other. Notable.
flight controllers uh, standing by for touchdown. You see the ground uh, beneath the Soyuz. Soft landing engines should fire momentarily. And we have touchdown. Touchdown at 8.49 p.m. Central Time, 8.49 a.m. Kazakhstan Time, 90 miles to the southeast of Jezkazgan, Kazakhstan. Fyodor Yurchikin, Karen Nyberg, and Luca Parmitano are home after 166 days in space. The Olympic torch is home after a four-day journey. of the mission great landing and uh, wish you same to you thank you for your work talk to you later The uh, all-terrain vehicles in the vicinity of the landing zone uh, now will begin to make their way towards uh, the spacecraft once again, uh, it was a, a flawless uh, descent uh, for the Soyuz vehicle and its three crew members. No issues associated with any of the major milestones of the uh, undocking, the deorbit burn, the module separation, and the uh, chute deployment that resulted in a touchdown at 8.49 p.m. Central Time. The initial uh, reports indicate a bullseye touchdown for the Soyuz TMA-09M spacecraft and its crew. On the front screen at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karolyov, the words Yest Posadka, the Russian for they've landed, flashed up at the time of touchdown. That is typical and traditional. And once again, uh, touchdown occurring uh, right on time at 8.49 p.m. Central Time, 8.49 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Monday morning. We'll stand by now for the all-terrain vehicles to, to move into place and near the spacecraft and the resumption of television from the landing site. And uh, you saw just a, uh, a glimpse of it uh, from the live television from the all-terrain vehicle at the landing site. It's now been confirmed by the search and recovery forces that the, uh, the descent module landed on its, uh, or was pulled over onto its side after touchdown. That is uh, typical uh, for landings in which there uh, is some wind in the area. The, the descent module is on its side. Uh, that uh, will uh, enable uh, 
a fairly speedy extraction of the crew. Meanwhile, this view uh, from the International Space Station, uh, from which uh, the crew departed just a few hours ago, leaving behind six of their crewmates, uh, moving uh, over the North Pacific Ocean from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. The six remaining crew members on board uh, uh, will be up for just a bit longer. They then uh, will have a very long sleep period uh, to culminate what has been a uh, frenetic week of activity on board the space station. Uh, they will have an off-duty day on Monday before picking up on research and other activities on Tuesday. Here in Mission Control, uh, standing uh, up uh, in the center row, uh, European Space Agency astronaut Paolo Nespoli, who has been on hand uh, to uh, provide uh, his own commentary uh, to uh, guests who have been watching uh, tonight's landing activities in the viewing room here in the uh, Space Station Flight Control Room. Uh, he was talking just a moment ago to uh, veteran astronaut Jeff Williams, uh, who is uh, no stranger to uh, space flight, one of the most flown uh, astronauts in the U.S. Astronaut Corps, and who will again be flying a few years from now on yet another expedition to the International Space Station. Uh, the flight control team here worked in concert with their Russian colleagues half a world away at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, outside Moscow, in monitoring and supervising uh, the uh, descent and landing of the Soyuz vehicle that touched down uh, about seven minutes ago at 8.49 p.m. Central Time. So we await uh, further video from the landing site as uh, the search and recovery forces uh, land in their respective helicopters and the all-terrain vehicles move into position to provide more views of uh, the recovery operations that uh, are underway to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan.
And now we are back with uh, live video from the landing site uh, to the southeast of Jez Kazgan uh, in the remote field on the south central steppe of Kazakhstan. As you can see, uh, search and recovery uh, team members are uh, currently uh, peering inside uh, the top hatch of the Soyuz vehicle, beginning the process uh, of extracting uh, the crew members. They're not yet out. Uh, we are just a few minutes uh, past the landing of the Soyuz vehicle on a very cold morning. It's about 25 degrees Fahrenheit at the landing site, but as you can see, under a cloudless sky. Extracting the first cosmonaut. Extracting number one. And the first of the uh, three crew members now being extracted uh, from the Soyuz vehicle. Extremely fast, just 11 minutes since touchdown. So this is the commander. And you're looking at uh, Soyuz commander Fyodor Yurchikin being brought uh, to his uh, chair near the spacecraft. Yurchikin uh, having landed uh, to uh, log 537 days in space on his four flights. He conducted three spacewalks during Expedition 36 and 37, the last one being back in August. In the uh, sub-freezing weather at the landing site, uh, your chicken wrapped up in a uh, rather thick blanket. This is uh, par for the course uh, for a Soyuz recovery operation. And as usual, uh, Russian uh, medical personnel are on scene uh, to conduct uh, initial medical tests, as will uh, NASA and European thing. Space Agency flight surgeons. Your chicken's 537 days in space places him 12th on the all-time endurance list. It uh, is a spectacular morning uh, on the steppe of Kazakhstan, visibility-wise. Uh, we saw the uh, Soyuz uh, descend under its chute for almost the entire period of 14 minutes following uh, the deployment of the chutes. All of the Soyuz functionality occurred on time, a flawless descent for Yurchikin, Nyberg, and Parmitano. <laughs> Ready, let's start extracting. No rush. So this is the torch. No rush. Move back. This will be more comfortable for everybody. Don't hurry. We still have time. Would you mind raising the torch? Show it to everybody. In Russian, they call it the FICL. That is the Olympic torch uh, being hoisted uh, by search and recovery personnel after having been extracted uh, from the Soyuz vehicle. The torch uh, will be uh, flown back to Moscow. It is being handed to Fyodor Yurchikin, as expected.
Just four days ago, that torch was brought on board by Mikhail Turin following its launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Now, after an out-of-this-world journey and a spacewalk photo opportunity on Saturday, the torch is back on Earth and again will be flown back to Moscow to be a return to the Sochi Olympic Organizing Committee. That torch uh, will be the one that lights the Olympic flame on February 7th, 2014 at Fischt Stadium in Sochi to begin the 2014 Winter Olympics. Again, uh, Fyodor Yurchikin holding the Olympic torch uh, over the past few days uh, and few weeks, in fact, in the build-up to the launch of the torch to the International Space Station. The torch uh, had a virtual monopoly on publicity surrounding uh, this uh, bevy of activity aboard the International Space Station. But now with the crew uh, safely back on Earth, uh, the torch uh, receives its share of publicity once again. Number there is the logo for the 2014 uh, Sochi Olympic Organizing Committee, Sochi.ru 2014, the same logo that was emblazoned on the uh, payload fairing of the Soyuz rocket that carried uh, Mikhail Turin, Rick Mastracchio, and Koichi Wakata to the International Space Station just four days ago. <laughs> Look on the other side. And there is uh, Karen Nyberg uh, having been extracted. Uh, she will be placed in her chair, leaving Luca Parmitano uh, as the third and final crew member to be uh, removed from the Soyuz vehicle. So you're cheeking out holding the Olympic torch uh, to his right, uh, Karen Nyberg. Uh, NASA personnel uh, now arriving on scene uh, to attend uh, to her. This uh, carefully choreographed uh, activity uh, that brought the Olympic torch to the International Space Station began with the acceleration of uh, the launch date uh, for Turin, Mastracchio, and Wakata by about three weeks. Uh, the Soyuz processing went very smoothly down in Baikonur. Uh, nothing was rushed, and the torch was carried to orbit uh, to be handed off uh, to Alec Kotov and Sergei Rozansky so that they could conduct uh, a spacewalk uh, on Saturday with the torch outside um, and then return it uh, to uh, Yurchikin and his crew to be stowed aboard uh, their Soyuz vehicle. The torch now very visible uh, in this video from the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan, Kazakhstan. <laughs> Yeah. 
Your cheek in, uh, and the center seat of the Soyuz vehicle uh, was removed first from the, the Soyuz, uh, which landed on its side. Uh, that is uh, typical for a Soyuz landing. Some land upright, most land uh, on their side after touchdown, or are pulled over uh, by the uh, force of the parachutes uh, that uh, somehow are taken by uh, the wind and uh, yank the Soyuz over onto its side. But nonetheless, uh, the descent module in good shape. Uh, the crew uh, being extracted, uh, your chicken and Nyberg are out of the vehicle. Uh, we're awaiting uh, the removal of Luca Parmitano. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now Karen Nyberg uh, in her uh, reclining chair. Russian uh, medical personnel around her uh, being joined by NASA medical personnel as well. And there's a shot of your chicken. Uh, behind uh, the three of them uh, is uh, a banner uh, heralding uh, the Sochi Olympic Organizing Committee. And of course, your chicken uh, continuing uh, to hold on uh, to the Olympic torch. The uh, launching of this torch uh, was designed uh, and uh, necessitated uh, the movement of uh, the launch date of the uh, newest three crew members uh, to the International Space Station by about three weeks. Uh, that uh, vicissitude of life uh, necessitating uh, the launching of uh, the latest crew uh, on November 7th to bring the Olympic torch to orbit uh, for a four-day out of this world relay to the International Space Station and back to Earth. A 
Again, uh, the Olympic torch uh, will be used uh, next February 7th uh, to light the Olympic flame at the Fischt Stadium in Sochi, Russia to uh, mark the opening of the 2014 Winter Olympics that will run from February 7th through the 23rd next year. Two other Olympic torches uh, were carried to orbit uh, on space shuttles in 1996 uh, for the uh, Summer Olympics in Atlanta, and again in 2000 uh, for the Sydney Summer Games. Temperatures at the landing site, uh, quite uh, chilly, uh, about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. The crew bundled up against the cold. Still awaiting uh, the extraction of Luca Parmitano, who uh, back on July 9th became the first Italian to walk in space. Parmitano will be placed in uh, that chair once he is uh, extracted from the uh, Soyuz vehicle that landed uh, 27 minutes ago at uh, 8.49 p.m. Central Time, 8.49 a.m. in Kazakhstan on Monday morning. The uh, sun is quite harsh uh, against uh, the crew member's eyes, uh, hence uh, Karen Nyberg wearing sunglasses. Once uh, Parmitano is out of the vehicle and has an opportunity, and there he is, Luca Parmitano with a big thumbs up, carried uh, out of the Soyuz uh, spacecraft uh, to his chair by the, by the capsule. Uh, all three crew members uh, will be hoisted uh, in their chairs a short time from now and brought into the inflatable medical tent nearby where they will receive uh, initial medical tests They'll uh, receive assistance in uh, help being helped out of their uh, Sokol launch and entry suits. Fist pumps, handshakes, and a wave to the crowd from Luca Parmitano from the European Space Agency, uh, completing his first flight into space, 166 days in orbit, 70.3 million miles in his journey along with his crewmates. These three crew members uh, will board uh, Russian helicopters uh, about an hour and a half or so from now uh, for a two-hour ride back to the uh, initial staging city for the search and recovery operations in Karaganda, Kazakhstan, which is uh, to the northeast of the landing site, where they uh, will have a, a traditional uh, brief welcoming ceremony by local Kazakh officials and then we'll split up with Parmitano and Nyberg boarding a NASA plane for the flight back to Houston and Yurchikin boarding a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center plane uh, for the ride back to Chikalovsky Air Base outside of his training base in Star City. Karen Nyberg home from her second flight into space having logged 180 days in space on her two missions, the first of which aboard the space shuttle is to deliver the uh, Japanese Kibo module to the International Space Station. Thank you. 
имеете в виду и девушка брать. Ну, будет планы обе брать на ну, суток. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, once again, a good look at Fyodor Yurchikin, the Soyuz commander who has been holding the Olympic torch since uh, being extracted from the uh, Soyuz vehicle a short time ago. And uh, now uh, we have on the line with us uh, NASA Public Affairs Officer Josh Byerly at the landing site uh, to the southeast of Jezkazgan. Josh, if you can hear me, uh, how are things going out there? Well, Rob, it's, it's uh, you know, it's going well. They got the crew out. You know, the weather is pretty much in the 20s, which I'm not going to complain about because obviously we've seen it uh, quite a bit worse. But uh, the crew looks good. They got the torch out, as you can see. Uh, I can tell you they had a backup to that torch uh, sort of a model of it with us yesterday there in Karaganda. The torch is much bigger in person and actually quite a bit heavier uh, than what you would expect. Uh, but they're proud of it. You know, this has been a big deal for uh, the Russians, obviously, um, and the Sochi uh, Olympic Organizing Committee. So it's, um, you know, they're happy to have it back on the ground with the crew, and the crew's doing really, really well right now. It's uh, a very bright morning, but uh, looks like it's quite uh, frigid out there, Josh. Uh, nonetheless, uh we're looking now at uh, live view of uh, the crew being hoisted uh, towards uh, the medical tent. Uh, can you follow along with them? Yeah, I sure can. There, uh, you know, it's, there's quite a bit more people out here than typically uh, happens. Of course, there's quite a bit of, of uh, interest in people here for the course itself, but uh, they are actually starting to move the crew over here towards this tent. The tent's uh, not very far away. You know, whenever the temperature tends to be uh, a little bit chilly out here. They they uh, they move that tent in quite a bit closer than they normally would. So it's only uh, probably I'd say 50, 60 yards uh, uh, from where the capsule actually landed. So it's, it's not a very long trip for the crew to get over in that tent and get their suits off and uh, get reacclimated back to Earth. Josh, we had a spectacular video of uh, the uh, spacecraft descending under its chute almost all the way from chute deployment uh, on what appears to be a cloudless sky out there. Uh, Walk us through uh, the next uh, few hours uh, for the crew. Once again, we're looking at your cheek and holding the torch. But walk us through the next few hours uh, from the point uh, now until the time the crew is headed back to Karaganda. Yeah, so what they will do is go in here inside uh, this tent, get checked out. Uh, what they're going to do is they're going to put them back on individual helicopters like they always do. It's probably a two-hour trip back to Karaganda. 
Um, they're going to have a typical uh, news conference, press conference, sort of a, a mini celebration there at the airport. Uh, and the one thing that's interesting that we've talked about here on the air before, you talked about it, is that they're going to take Luca and Karen and do what they call sort of a, a field test, which is really this is just ramping up for the Scott Kelly and Mikhail Krienko flight. Uh, that will happen a little more than a year from now. What they do is they test out uh, how the crew members react to being back on Earth. It's sort of simple stuff, it sounds like, but uh, what they have them do is basically sit down, line and stand up, and then they will have them lie down uh, and try to stand up, and then they have uh, this maneuver they do where they cross the crew members' arms in front of their chest, uh, have them close their eyes, and then attempt to walk with one foot in front of another, which, honestly, I'm not sure I could do that uh, on a good day, but they are going to do that. Um, and then Luca and Karen will get ready to uh, ultimately come back home to Houston, uh, and Fjord will head on back uh, to Russia. So it's going to be a busy few hours for this crew. Uh, they've got a little bit more traveling to do on these helicopters and then planes, but obviously they're probably happy to be back on Earth. And left uh, on board the International Space Station instead of the usual indirect uh, rotation, as it is called, with just three crew members on board. Uh, the full complement of six is on board. Uh, uh, having been augmented uh, just four days ago uh, to a nine-person crew. But now with the six uh, folks on board the International Space Station, uh, everything can press ahead uh, uh, full bore uh, with research and so forth uh, in the days and weeks ahead. How does the uh, Soyuz spacecraft look uh, from your standpoint as you stand near it? You know, honestly, you've seen a lot of these just like I have. This one's not as charred uh, as what they typically are. You know, anybody who's been out here knows that uh, the Soyuz is kind of uh, looking, <laughs> looking like it just came back from space. You know, usually it's pretty charred and, and kind of torn up a little bit. And there's sometimes a smell that comes off of it. But this one looks pretty uh, uh, pretty clean, actually, compared to what uh, some of the others I've seen. It is on its side, uh, but that's obviously normal. That, that happens uh, quite a bit. And with the uh, ceremonial trappings of the Olympic torch uh, having uh, been a predominant uh, feature over the past four days, it has been seen uh, almost every step of the way uh, down in Baikonur the other day when I was down there, now at the landing site uh, for you and uh, this big crowd that, uh, that's on scene. Uh, how, uh, uh, to the best of your estimation, uh, will the torch be uh, taken care of at this point? Well, they've got, uh, obviously, they've got some handlers that will take care of it. They've got a special box uh, that they will put it in. It'll work on these helicopters to go back to car and with it. It would not shock me one bit um, if we see that torch make another appearance uh, there at the airport whenever we have the ceremony. So, obviously, we'll get some video of that. But we've seen a little bit of it. It's, it's very beautiful in the wild. Uh, it looks different than some of the other torches you've seen, if, if those of you out there uh, follow along with the Olympics. But, um, you know, it's really cool to be here to see the pride uh, that the Russians have uh, in this torch and in the part that the uh, space station has played uh, in this torch relay. Uh, they're obviously very excited uh, about the Olympics that are coming up here in just a few uh, few short months. So, you know, that, uh, that spirit is already pretty pervasive uh, throughout everybody that's really been involved in this. And, of course, uh, the torch uh, having driven a complex uh, choreography over the past few days uh, to get it to orbit and uh, to bring it back to Earth uh, to be returned to the Sochi Olympic Organizing Committee. Not the first Olympic torch to fly in space, as we mentioned a moment ago, Josh, uh, in 1996. Uh, the torch for the Summer Games in Atlanta was flown on the space shuttle and back home, as well as uh, for the 2000 Summer Games in Sydney, Australia. Uh, any uh, final words uh, from the landing side, Josh, as uh, the crew now is in the medical tent? No, uh, it, it, as we already talked about, once they get the crew in the medical tent, things to ramp down pretty easy. All of the helicopters are on the ground. They've got them uh, pretty far spread out this time. It's uh, It was kind of a, a high end to get over to where the Soyuz is, but everybody is already beginning to uh, make their way uh, back to their helicopters. They will uh, upright that Soyuz here in a few minutes and put it on a truck and uh, drive it back to where it needs to go. Uh, what's happening right now with about the spacecraft is they're still taking uh, quite a bit of photos. Everybody's sort of gathering around the spacecraft and the flags and uh, sort of taking some final moments. But we should be airborne here probably the third and head on back to uh, head on back to Karaganda. We'll get a chance to talk uh, interviews with them and talk uh, on the planet and 
and start about this sort of crazy schedule. For the space station, because as you mentioned, it's been an extremely busy last few days for them, and it all sort of comes to a close today. Josh Byerly, NASA Public Affairs Officer at the landing site, uh, just to the southeast of uh, the remote town of Jez Kazgan. Uh, Josh, thanks very much. Have a safe trip back uh, to Karaganda and back to Houston. I'll see you in a few days, my friend. Josh Byerly at the landing site uh, with his uh, thoughts up close and personal uh, to uh, the three crew members who uh, are safely in the medical tent, uh, appearing uh, in uh, good shape at this point in time. Uh, the Olympic torch uh, having been uh, displayed prominently by Fyodor Yurchikin after it was uh, brought out of the Soyuz TMA 09M spacecraft and handed to Yurchikin in a final gesture of uh, symbolism uh, to mark its four day journey to and from the International Space Station. And as you can see, uh, members of the uh, Russian search and recovery forces known as Ros Aviatsa posing uh, for pictures, uh, which is typical uh, alongside the Soyuz capsule. All three crew members uh, inside the inflatable and heated medical tent uh, to receive initial medical tests and uh, to receive assistance in uh, removing their Sokol launch and entry suits and uh, donning a more comfortable flight clothing uh, and warmer clothing uh, that will enable them uh, to be brought uh, into our in, uh, individual helicopters that are parked nearby for the two-hour ride back to Karaganda, as you heard Josh Byerly mention a few moments ago, a two-hour helicopter ride to the initial staging city uh, in Karaganda uh, before uh, the crew splits up uh, with Nyberg and Parmitano boarding a NASA jet to fly back to Houston and Parmitano and um, uh, Fyodor Yurchikin, the Soyuz commander, boarding a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft uh, to fly back to Chikalovsky Air Base outside of Star City uh, to be reunited with his family and Russian space officials. Aboard the International Space Station, uh, the new Expedition 38 crew under the command of Oleg Kotov, uh, joined by uh, Sergei Rozansky, Mikhail Turin, NASA astronauts uh, Mike Hopkins and Rick Mastracchio, and Koichi Wakata from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency are headed into uh, an extended sleep period. Uh, Monday will be an off-duty day for the crew. Uh, they'll uh, be allowed uh, to relax uh, with very little communications required uh, with the ground, only when the crew feels that is necessary. They will pick up uh, all of their work on Tuesday in support of space station operations. Uh, there will be debriefs uh, with Kotov and Rosansky on Tuesday uh, regarding uh, the spacewalk that they conducted uh, on Saturday, in which the Olympic torch was brought outside uh, for uh, a portion of the five-hour, 50-minute spacewalk that Kotov and Rosansky conducted. Uh, the crew will also uh, review emergency roles and responsibilities on board the station. Now that it is under the command of Oleg Kotov, uh, research uh, will uh, get underway 
on Wednesday, and the crew will, will be back into a full complement of scientific investigations. The uh, Soyuz landed uh, less than an hour ago at uh, 8.49 p.m. Central Time, and now you're looking at a replay of a video that was shot of the Soyuz descent under its parachute from uh, one of the Russian uh, search and recovery helicopters, the MI-8s. There were a dozen of them involved in uh, today's uh, landing operation, and uh, which are at the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan to assist in uh, the extraction of the crew. Uh, they'll be uh, working uh, in the recovery of the crew and the flying of the crew back to Karaganda. Uh, in the next phase of this uh, recovery operation. Again, this is a replay of video that was captured during uh, the descent of the Soyuz under its parachute less than an hour ago. The Soyuz uh, performed a bullseye landing right on track, uh, enabling a swift uh, recovery of the crew and their extraction. And again, this video shot less than an hour ago during the final seconds of uh, the spacecraft's descent to the surface. Uh, you'll see the soft landing engines fire just a moment from now. That is a jarring ride in the Russian helicopters sometimes. Uh, for those of us who have, have experienced that, uh, the ride and the, there's the soft landing engines firing, a great shot in this replay from the helicopters. Uh, sometimes the ride on the Soyuz heli in the uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, can be more jarring than uh, the ride for the uh, crew members in the Soyuz vehicle itself. The uh, landing occurring just 29 minutes after sunrise on a uh, frosty but uh, cloudless morning in uh, south central Kazakhstan. And there you can see in this uh, video replay, uh, search and recovery personnel <coughs> uh, getting out of the helicopters uh, to race across uh, this field, a barren, uh, desolate field, usually punctuated in south central Kazakhstan by its high brush uh, towards uh, the spacecraft to begin the process of safing the vehicle 
and uh, opening up the top hatch of the Soyuz since it uh, landed on its side, which is very typical for most Soyuz landings, uh, that uh, initiating the extraction of the crew. Once again, uh, you're watching uh, a replay of a video that was acquired uh, within the hour uh, from the landing site. You saw quite a bit of this uh, in real time, but uh, this uh, very interesting video shows uh, the initial search and recovery personnel uh, from the uh, Ros Aviatsa Search and Recovery Forces, uh, whose helicopter landed uh, within a few yards of uh, the Soyuz vehicle following its touchdown. And the initial moments uh, as we uh, Look over the shoulders of uh, the search and recovery personnel as they begin the initial process of uh, opening up the top hatch of the Soyuz vehicle that you see landed on its side, uh, but safely. Very typical for a Soyuz vehicle to be dragged onto its side uh, by the parachutes. Uh, other uh, personnel now in the background there racing uh, to the side of the spacecraft. A dozen Russian Mi-8 helicopters were employed in the uh, recovery of the Expedition 37 crew members, Yurchikin, Nyberg, and Parmitano, who landed at 8.49 p.m. Central Time, 8.49 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Monday morning. These are personnel from RSC Energia, uh, the manufacturer of the Soyuz spacecraft. As they wipe down uh, the, the outside of the hatch, uh, that will minimize any uh, particulate matter uh, from uh, moving uh, into the spacecraft once the hatch is opened.
Once again, uh, this video from the landing site showing the Olympic torch uh, in the hands of search and recovery personnel as they pose for pictures with it. Uh, the torch uh, was extracted from the Soyuz spacecraft uh, shortly after uh, the Soyuz commander, Fyodor Yurchikin, uh, was uh, moved out of the center seat of the Soyuz into his uh, comfortable chair nearby the spacecraft. Uh, he posed with that uh, torch. He was followed in short order by uh, NASA flight engineer Karen Nyberg and uh, European Space Agency Luca Parmitano, uh, who was last out of the Soyuz spacecraft. So the trio back on Earth after 166 days in space and a journey of more than 70 million miles. Back here at Mission Control in Houston, uh, the flight control team uh, that has been on console uh, working uh, with their Russian counterparts at the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov outside Moscow. Uh, activity uh, has, wa has wound down here in the flight control room following uh, the bullseye landing of the Soyuz spacecraft on the steppe of Kazakhstan, the extraction of the crew, which is currently in the medical tent uh, nearby about 100 yards or so away from the, uh, the Soyuz TMA-09M spacecraft. Uh, the crew uh, receiving initial medical tests. Uh, they will uh, then uh, don uh, comfortable clothing, flight suits, and uh, warm clothing uh, to be brought uh, toward three Russian Mi-8 helicopters for a two-hour ride back to the staging city of Karaganda, Kazakhstan, where they will uh, receive a short welcoming ceremony by Kazakh officials and uh, be uh, flown in separate aircraft, Nyberg and Parmitano in a NASA jet uh, to be flown back to Houston, Parma, uh, with Yurchikin boarding a Gagarin cosmonaut training center aircraft uh, to be flown back to Chikalovsky Air Base on the outskirts of Star City, his training base in the suburb of Moscow. With that, uh, the safe landing of the uh, Expedition 37 crew. Uh, we'll wrap it up with a couple of programming notes. On uh, Monday morning, Veterans Day, there will be a special video file scheduled at 9.30 a.m. Central Time, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, of post-landing activities that take place in Karaganda with the uh, Soyuz crew that has just landed, as well as, if uh, they are conducted, uh, short interviews with Karen Nyberg and Luca Parmitano. Again, uh, that video file on Monday morning, Veterans Day, to air on NASA television at 9.30 a.m. Central Time, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time, with replays throughout the day on Monday. Because uh, Monday is a federal holiday in the United States, Veterans Day, there'll be no Expedition 38 Space Station Live broadcast. Our Space Station Live uh, broadcast on NASA television will resume on Tuesday, November t uh, 12th at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time on NASA television. And once again, uh, everything uh, going very well on the ground after a flawless undocking, descent, and landing for the Soyuz TMA-09M and the Olympic Torch. Fyodor Yarchikin, Karen Nyberg, Luca Parmitano safely back on Earth after 166 days in space. We'll wrap it up uh, at this point. Uh, thanks for tuning in throughout the course of the day today. For everybody here and for our viewership around the world on NASA television, this is Mission Control Houston.